morning, folks. Um, and I trust that uh, as you tune in with us today, um, that you have had a blessed day or if you choose to tune in later on in the evening after the busyness of life is over, that um, you've had a blessed day. But this morning, uh, we're looking for a few minutes at the amazing challenge that Jesus has left us as we try and understand his heart and his motive in John chapter 13. The first 12 chapters of the Gospel of John describe the public ministry of Jesus. But starting in chapter 13, most of what John describes are the last private moments Jesus enjoys prior to his crucifixion. In chapter 12 of John, six days before the Passover, we see Jesus in Bethany where Lazarus lived with a group of friends. There's a meal and there's the washing of feet. We see Mary anointing the feet of Jesus with her expensive perfumes and then wiping the feet of Jesus with her hair. And when we come to chapter 13, we also have a meal. We have a group of friends and a foot washing. This time it's not Mary and Martha of Bethany. It's Jesus, the master. Mary was anointing the feet of Jesus in preparation for his burial. But in chapter 13, we have Jesus, the master, and he's washing the feet of his disciples, preparing them for life after his um, death, his burial and his resurrection. Maybe you're watching this today and you're a husband, you're a wife, you're a manager, you're a colleague, or possibly a ministry coordinator or a church leader. And you've got this, you've got this question that burns deep within you. And it's how can I make a difference where God has placed me at home, at work, at church? I believe your answer could possibly lie in this passage. This morning, we don't have time to to read through it, um, and I trust that you'll see the readings on the screen. But I I do want to take a few moments to highlight some of the notable takeaways from this passage. The passage of the the Last Supper, which gives us a window into Jesus' heart a few hours before this eternal transaction would take place. The opening verse of chapter 13 sets the scene for the whole of chapters 13 through to chapter 17. And it's love that is one of the key terms in these chapters. Jesus now shows his disciples the full extent of his love. And as we look at verse 1 in chapter 13, we see that Jesus knew that his hour had come. Jesus lived this, um, this, this life that he had, this life of ministry in anticipation of this hour. But Jesus' public ministry is now over. In close to 24 hours time, he would be nailed to a Roman cross. And yet we see the heart of a master who will use these last precious few hours to minister to his disciples. The mealtime together was sacred. The Passover meal was a time to linger, a time to spend in the presence of the ones that you loved. It was the opposite of a fast food restaurant. It was a long food restaurant. You sit for hours and you share. And that's the meaning when Jesus said in Revelation um, chapter 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. I will share a level of intimacy with that person who invites me to come in, to come close. But now at this Passover meal, the world is shut out. They're outside and it's just Jesus and his own men. It's like a coach preparing his team for a game or possibly a general rallying his troops before battle. Jesus and the the, the disciples are sharing this moment inside. Jesus has nothing more to say to the world, but he has plenty more to say to his disciples. And it's what he says and it's what he does that should grab the heart of every believer, of every parent, of every work manager, of every church leader. He leads from a position of service. Jesus Jesus becomes the loving servant. In verse 7, Jesus says, You may feel that you don't realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And at work, you may feel isolated. You know that people like you, but... They just don't get you and they just don't understand. Can I urge you to persevere in your service to your colleagues? Be humble and keep on keeping on and allow the Holy Spirit to minister through you. 
Jesus gave himself completely to washing their feet. And look at how thorough he was. First, he rose from supper. He was intentional. Then he laid aside his garments. And this was a picture of what was to come in just a few hours time. Jesus then took a towel and put it around his waist. And finally, he poured water into a basin. Jesus just didn't want to display the image of a servant. He gave himself completely to this work. And as Jesus goes around the table washing and drying the feet of his disciples, it was a dramatic scene. In Luke's account of the upper room, he says in chapter 22 of Luke, the disciples entered the room debating who was the greatest. By, but by what he did, Jesus illustrates true greatness. We know from Jewish culture it was customary for the lowest servant in the household to wash the feet of the guests as they came into the house, especially for a formal meal like this. But not tonight. They ate their meal with dirty feet. Let's say it as it is. This would have been a rather unpleasant experience. 13 men um, who had just walked on sweaty, dirty, dusty roads covered in rubbish and animal waste. And they're now sharing a table with no chairs. So why didn't any of the disciples do this first? Any of those disciples would gladly have washed Jesus' feet but they were not prepared to wash their fellow disciples, their competitors, so no one's feet got washed. Folks, what a huge wake up call for us as we function at work or in our churches. Actions speak louder than words. So when he wanted to teach the proud, he didn't just say it, Jesus showed it. We know that this lesson did stick powerfully because decades later, when Peter wrote to the Christians about humility, he puts it like this. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. More literally, Peter wrote, wrap the ap apron of humility around yourself. Let me leave you with two challenges for the weeks ahead. And more specifically, um, as we consider the sacrifice of Christ um, over this next Easter season, over these next few weeks. Firstly, let's have no motive behind our service. Let's, let's uplift each other, our neighbours and our fellow believers to bring glory to God. And secondly, and really poignantly at the moment, let's spend meaningful time together. Let's enjoy lingering in each other's presence. So at this Easter time, I pray that the Lord would bless you, that he would keep you, and that his face would shine upon you and that he would give you peace. Amen.